Welcome back, Husker fans! Today was a big day. Today was a very big day. Um, and if you don't have the internet or have social media or the TV or live outside of the state of Nebraska, then you probably already know that Bo Pliny has been fired effective immediately as the head football coach of the University of Nebraska Cornhuskers. Um... Pretty much, we owe him $7.9 million for firing him. But the way I look at it is this. Bo Pelini is a good enough head football coach that he will get a job in maybe one of the lower conferences or SEC East or like the Pac-12. He's good enough to coach in Division One football again. Meaning that $7.9 million will owe him some money because I don't see him getting a job next year, but I could be wrong. Maybe... After next season, so the 2016 season, I assume he'll get back in, which means we won't owe him as much money or the entire total that we still owe him is wiped out. I'm not for sure about that. Not a contract guy. Um, Eckhurst basically made the th like the three points of why Bo Pelini was let go today. Not winning enough big games. Getting blown out in a lot of games, in a lot of big games, and not getting us any championship trophies. Uh, and I agree with him 100%. I think, I think Bo Pelini needed to go. I think we needed to start a transition in the right directions toward winning championships. Um, which brings me to my first sponsorship. Search! the nectar of the gods, and the drink of champions. Mmm. I'm a champion already. Surge is, yeah, I'm throwing my glasses on. I'm kind of blind, Surge. It's quite delicious. Um, it was the right move by the administration to let Bo Pliny go. Now, what do we do? Obviously, putting Barney Cotton in the interim coach was its kind of like uh, the plot thickens, folks. I don't know if that was the right move. <laughs> it's like... Uh, it's like you laugh when something's like so ridiculous and you can't picture... You can't think of why it was done. But I see the reason why it was done because he was the associate head coach. What else? You're going to go over him? Possibly. Um, I like to make a point right now. The players are obviously tweeting using their social media and are hurting. And that sucks. That's like the worst feeling as a fan is to see your players that you love, that you follow hurting. Unless you're one of those douchebags, assholes. That decide to tweet these people back saying, oh, I'm stupid, you stupid, you boost got the goo. They're hurting, they just lost their head coach, they lost their father, fatherly mentor in the college football spectrum. A lot of these kids are coming from out of state, and Bo Pelini is kind of like a father figure to them. He recruited them, he brought them into the program, he nursed them, he put them part of the process. They have that right to tweet how upset they are about what they're feeling. But you don't have to be the freaking asshole that tweets them back and to call them a douchebag or say that, you know, we're, you know, if you hate us so much, we won't be there next year. Get a fucking life. Um, we're great fans. Let's treat them with respect. We know they're hurting. Just be there for them. That's all, that's all we can do. Uh, if anything, tweet support to him, saying, "Hey, we still got your back. We understand the problem. We love you. We're still your. We still got your back. Go big red." Um, that's about it from that. Uh, so, at this moment, I like to say thanks to Bo Pelini for your seven years and for pulling us out of the shitter that Bill Callahan left us in. Um, you were the right guy for that job, um, and we didn't make it easy on you. Us fans were. We're very passionate. We want to win the championship every single year. And you had to deal with that. And we're sorry. And we thank you for bringing in these people. 
mentoring these young men uh, and putting them into football players and graduating them. That's the whole, pro I mean, that's, that's a big process. Um, so thank you for your seven years um, from all of us Husker fans. Um, I put together a short list of head coaches or coaches that most likely are going to be a thing. During the press conference today, Eckers basically said, hey, I'm not hiring a firm to help me find a new head coach, which basically is kind of initiating that he's already been in contact with people. Um, and I see us getting a new head coach by ends of by the end of the week uh, because we've already had a couple decommitments from our recruitment class, which isn't good. Um, we need to get a guy in here quick to basically, like, Put the puzzle pieces back together. Um, and people got to understand this. This is, Eckhurst is a lawyer and a very, very smart man. His dream job is not Nebraska. His dream job is the athletic director of Wisconsin. Uh, and you know how good he looks if, um, a lot of fans wanted Bo Pelini fired. He makes those fans happy by firing Bo Pelini. Now he hires a coach that fans want, Scott Frost. <laughs> And that makes him good. And then when Alvarez retires, and I'm going to say less than five five years or less, um, those Wisconsin fans are like, well, he made like Nebraska, he made smart decisions in Nebraska, and he obviously made the right choice. He's a Wisconsin boy. We'll bring him back. He's just got to make us happy for the short future. <laughs> um, so this short, I have a short list. I'm going to go over each one a little bit. Let's go over. First one is Jim Tressel. He's bringing some baggage. I don't know if he's been cleared by the NCAA to coach again. <laughs> so he might have to sit out a couple games. Um, wherever he goes, he wins, and he wins big. Um, he is old school, very traditional built, which Nebraska likes. But with the fans nowadays that want more modern, more initiative, more innovative, he's not the right guy. Um, I do like his sweater vests. There's that. Uh... But I don't see that happen. I mean, I wouldn't mind having Jim Tressel. I think he's one of the my top three candidates that I would like to see as the head coach. Um, other coach, Gary Patterson, who's TCO, TCU's coaches, our head coach. I don't see him leaving TCU. I think they're up for the college football playoff, aren't they? Um, which means if he decides to take the job, it's not going to be after till after middle of January. we got to hire someone quick. Uh uh, so I say no on him. I don't think he'll come. I'm not saying, like, no, I don't want him. I want him. I'm just saying I don't think he'll come. Craig Ball, uh, obviously he knows how to win uh, at North Dakota State. The problem is, though, is yes, he's a Nebraska boy, which I think a lot of fans want. But he hasn't proven his winning abilities in Division One. Um, and that same goes with also Joe Moglia, who's Coastal Carolinas, was Bo's intern, gave advice to him, was also the CEO of TD Ameritrade back in the day. Uh, hasn't proven that he could win at Division One. He hasn't been given an opportunity yet, so I don't know. Um, Jerry Kill, I don't see him leaving Minnesota. And also his health, health concerns, I know we can get over it, but how bad... We're, we're a fan base that was not okay with 9 or 10 wins. <laughs> I'm just saying it. We were not okay with it. If this guy has a seizure on the sideline and is gone for 5 or 6 games, we're going to fucking flip out as a fan base. I, I just don't see him, and I don't see us forking over the 5 plus million dollars for Jerry Kill. And I don't see him leaving Minnesota. I think he likes it there. I think that's like his dream job. Pat Narduzzi. Duh. Why not? Uh, I think he's also number two on my list behind Jim Tressel. Or like, it's like Jim Tressel, Pat Narduzzi, and then the guy in front of him, my boy Scott Frost, all in for Frost. Winter is coming. And by winter, I mean Frost. It's just so delicious. Now, people are like, he's inexperienced. As he never had any head coaching job. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. 
He's a Nebraska boy. He won a national title here. His offense is very similar to ours. People like Wooly had Marcus Mariota. He's the guy who developed Marcus Mariota for the last two years as his quarterback coach. There's something there, folks. Plus, with I think he would initiate a – he would call the plays. I have a feeling about it. If he becomes our head coach, he'll call the plays. And I think he keeps on Ron Brown as our run coordinator and Rick, Rich Fish, Rick Fisher as our passing coordinator. Those are two of our top recruiters. I think he keeps those guys on to at least another year. Uh, and Ron Brown's Nebraska. He, he's from, you know, the Scott Frost era, so obviously they know each other. Um, and those were like the two best position play, positions we had on offense, those skill players. And I think Scott Frost would take over being a quarterback, you know, guiding the quarterbacks the right way. Now the thing about him is since he doesn't have any – head coaching thing I think he brings in a defensive coordinator who does have head coaching thing and I think if Will Muschamp is there you grab it and take it but I think Will Muschamp is probably going to go to Auburn or Texas A&M now the next two guys is two guys he actually um, Scott Frost played under um, and two guys that I think kind of helped him go after a coaching spectrum one is Raheem Morris who was Tampa Bay's head coach. I know they sucked. He's also the Redskins, Washington Redskins. Shouldn't say that. Redskins is bad. The Washington football NFL team uh, defensive backs coach. And the defensive backs for them have actually played somewhat decent. They got Ryan Clark, you know. Plus he has a head coaching mind. I think, you know, someone Scott Frost can lean on. The other guy who is actually a tight ends coach right now but this is his first offensive job, is Eric Mangini, who coached the Jets, had pretty decent teams at the Jets, was Cleveland Browns coach. Browns have sucked always, so whatever. Um, and he's coaching the tight ends with Jim Harbaugh in San Francisco right now. So I like those two guys as a defense coordinator's position. I think you keep on Katz. I think you keep on Warren. I think you get rid of Beck. I think you get rid of Garrison. I think you get rid of Cotton. Uh... And then you get rid of Ross Ells. And then you bring in the rest of your, you know, staff uh, as an initiative to, you know, build shit into a winning program. I think I love Scott Frost. I think he's going to be a great head coach. And a lot of people are like, it's two, three years down the line. Why not now get those nine to ten wins each year for the next two years before a championship team? I like it. I'm okay with it. That's it, folks. That's my coaching segment. Um... Go Big Red. Be nice to the players. Be nice to the coaches. They are going to end up having to leave. It sucks. You're going to have to pack up and move your family somewhere else. But that's part of the coaching and the college football life. Um, I'm Derek Arthur. Thank you for watching. As always, be loud, be proud. Go Big Red.